Project Electric Back. A couple of years ago the RFBAQ started working with Qfleet and our, our goal was to future-proof rural fire and rural firefighting vehicles with what we can control and acknowledging what we can't control. Now in the future we don't know what the power unit of vehicles are going to be. But what we do have control over is everything behind the donk. And in our previous vehicles, so the, the Fusion Cruiser uh, that we built, everything was electric apart from the pump, which had a Hatz diesel on it. And so we wanted to move to that next evolution of let's have an electric pump on it as well. Okay, so the case for, what do you do? Okay, hose is empty as you can see. Yeah, nothing, nothing behind my hand. Nothing up your sleeve. Yeah, that's it. beautiful. Put it in there, stick it in, and just press either the bottom right button or the word drafting. Throw the bottom, bottom right button in there. Uh, Let's just hit the word drafting because it says drafting. There you yeah. go. Drafting. And just stand back. And it'll wait till, so that's once the air's coming through, it'll speed up. It'll go slow and there we go. Until the air's gone through. That's right. Okay, awesome. You can see what pressure, negative pressure is too. Yeah. And that's the sound of the pump running. That's it running max. Yeah. So uh, the pump won't get any noisier than that. And it shuts itself off. What we do is we got this is our hose roll button. Yeah. Now our hose roll's on, you see the button here later? Yeah. I just felt the line charge. Yep. Now that's that's under hydrant. So if we press mop up one. The pump's ready to go, you just need to open it. So that's that's the basic, that's the lowest setting. And so how many litres a minute is this? Uh, 30 litres a minute, you can see it on the screen just here. Okay, yep. Yeah. And then and if the we next go, setting? That's the next setting. And so how many litres of water? That's 80 litres a minute. 80 litres a minute. That's the middle setting. Okay. Okay, and what's that at? That's 100. If you switch that to 150, you'll get more. What was that? With 60 litres a minute. That now is 50 litres a minute. 50 right litres now. a minute. Okay, and 25 psi. 25 psi. Now number two. That's 100 litres a minute. 100 litres a minute at 80 psi. 80 psi. And number three. 120 litres a minute. 120 litres a minute. At 135 psi. At 135 psi. And it's a 500 litre tank. The vehicle is not running. Yeah. So this is only running off the battery. And you've got about three hours on that, on that sitting there. So if I had three hours worth of water, 100 and X many litres yeah. a minute, I could stand here for that long and end up with very wet grass. Yeah. Now, if you want to go on this setting, right? You'll have about eight to ten hours. Okay, yeah. On the battery. And that's without that's no input. Yep, so so what yeah. would happen normally on the fire ground is you would have your vehicle running yeah. and your alternator would be topping up the battery. Yeah. Or oh, right now we've got a little bit of solar. Yeah. The numbers I've given you is without solar. Yeah. So right now you've got solar helping that process. And then when I want to turn it off, I just, just do that. Yep. I don't have to push the button there and the pump just stops. Yep. And with everything on, I get about, I think I get about four or five days until I get down to 30%. And I haven't actually run it lower low that. Yeah, Save. I can feel the pressure coming and going in this line here yeah. as, it, as, it, as it keeps it up. There's a leak, there's a valve that allows the water to leak back. Yeah. And as it does that, it relieves a little bit, then it just tops up. Yeah. And then when I want the water to come back out, I just do this. And then, so it's, it's, it's just like the pump at home. What sort of pump is it? Positive displacement pump. Positive displacement pump? Yeah. Give us three and two lines going at three. That's the low setting. Yeah, now, mind you, with an RFS truck, if you turn one off, you've got to adjust the truck, otherwise the pressure goes up or down, yeah? yeah? This one, the pump just adjusts. Okay. See? It takes a second, but it just adjusts accordingly. Yep. And until yours comes back to where it was, this is the high setting here. So this is three? Yeah. That's three. So the flow rate of this compared to a, 150 um, total right now. On both lines. Between both lines, yes. Oh yeah, that's very impressive. And then your pressure just comes straight back up. 
So let's keep running until it goes empty. Okay. What it will do is, when it gets to 20%, we'll lose the high, high pressure. Yeah. We'll go to a lower pressure. And then when it gets down to 10%, it'll cut out. Okay, yeah. Which will leave you 10% for deluge. But those numbers are all adjustable. So yeah. whatever you want them to be. So you'll always be cut out at 10, and that can only be turned on by deluge. So the noisiest thing right here, apart from us, <laughs> is that. That's yeah. right. That's a bit amazing, isn't it? Solves your radio problems at the back of being the pump operator. And communication. My tank level is on my remote here. Oh, I can, oh. To the light? Yep. So right now I'm at 20, 25%, which is about what we're at. So this will cut down in a second. Yeah, 50, 100%. We can turn on the lights on from here. There you yep. go. There's our load. We can turn our lights on and off. And the weight of the actual pump unit itself. So there you go. We're out of order. We're out of order. So the, the weight of the actual pump unit itself. Yep. How much is it? And and then compare it to let's say the pump system on a a dual cap. Uh, oh, sorry, a medium attack. Okay. So the weight of the actual pump. Yep. So minus all the canopy stuff. Yes. Roughly about 80 to 100 kilo, depending right. on the batteries you put in it. Yeah. Once you put batteries in it, it can be anywhere from 100 to 120. So that's including the battery. 120 including battery. And compared to a medium truck, yep. like the engine you're talking like four or 500 kilo, just for the engine. And then you've got the two pumps, which once again is, um, I would only be estimating, but I'd say somewhere in the vicinity of four or 500 kilo. Then you've got all the plumbing to the front and you've got all the manifold on the back and all the gauges and all that dealio. You're talking at least another 100, 200 kilos there. So right, right now our pump is empty. 10% our, ta our tank is empty? Well, we've got 100 li 140 litres of water. For personal protection. Yeah. Okay. The first button is deluge. Basically that just follows a recipe for everything that you would require to happen in a del in a emergency situation. It turns on your deluge system, activates your lights, it can even sound an alarm or any other features you would like it to do. Lights, that just turns on all the surrounding lights to flood the area with spotlights to see at night time or find your truck. This turns on your hose reel, so you, you can just walk away from the truck and turn it on. Mop up one is about 172 kPa or 20 psi. Strike one is 40 psi or 275 kPa. Strike two is about 150 psi or 1000 kPa. Pump off just turns the pump off no matter what mode it was on and hose reel just it automatically just rewinds the hose reel. And what are the lights across the top for? So the first one is just telling you that you're connected to the module, the pump. The second one is, the second three is how much water you have, 20, 50 or 100%. And the last one's whether your battery's low on remote. Got your four pump settings. Basically 20 psi, 40, 80, 145. Here you've got your tasks. So they're just basically where you need one or two more things happening at once, which in this case is hydrant, which means that the um, tank will self-fill and turn itself off or you can do a case one off that at the same time Suction's the same thing and fill tank is basically just allowing water to go into the tank to shut itself off then you've got um, your valves where you can just manually open which valves you want open for doing depending on what you're doing and then these are auxiliary so basically you know hose will rewind to lock all the lockers turn your light lights on your inverter that sort of stuff and over here we've got what we call one-touch actions. So basically that means that you press one button and it basically follows a recipe and does all the things you need to do for you and you don't have to touch anything else. It's like one touch done. So operating screen on the back. Um, I am the demographic of the majority of Rural Fire, which is a middle-aged man um, with failing eyesight and I'll be wearing gloves as well. I, I like this because I can see it without my glasses on and I can I can make it work, I can make water go in and I can make water go out, which is the most important thing for a fire truck. Now, as we saw in the last fires in, uh, in September and October in the southwest, uh, the, all the pictures we see on Facebook at the back of the trucks is they're completely covered in bull dust and dirt. So this is now, you've come back from the fire, you're on the fire ground, this is completely filthy. How robust is this? Well, it's waterproof. Um, you can use it with gloves while wet, you can use it while frozen, it can be submerged to 
minus, uh, you know, meter in water, and it can be dropped from meter. So it's quite robust. Okay, so it's fantastic. So I can see it, I can operate it, and it's, it's like you said, it's, it's imp impact proof, freeze proof, waterproof. Yeah. Fantastic, awesome. You can control the lights from here. Okay, awesome. You got your orange. Yep. You can do your rears, left or right. You can do your deluge from here. You got an inverter, so you got your lights in there to so turn all your lights and your cabinets on. You can lock your doors and you can re rewind your hose reel and you can turn your inverter on. So with the screen I can make water go in, make water go out. Yep. I can run my lights. Yep. Um, I can run my emergency deluge system. Yep. I run my inside cabinet lights. Yep. Yeah, we're down to 94%. We've gone down 3% since we got here. Power. Okay, so so we've we've emptied a couple of tanks of water. We've done actually 1,950 litres of water. <laughs> so we've done 1,900, 2,000 litres of water. Yep. And we've um, used 6% of power. Yep. And we've we've played with the light bars. At no stage has the vehicle been running at all, and we've only used that small amount. Yep. We've got 145 hours worth of battery left. If we go this setting. On that, we've got 13 hours straight with no input. If we go to that, we've got about two hours on that, yeah. on batteries. Now if we go just straight water, we've got two hours of that, Yeah. if you had unlimited water. Or, Nine hours of that. So if you were to put that on a medium attack, would yep. that be the same pump unit? I want the same flow we'd get right now out of, let's say, a GARM 125. Or the multi-pump we currently have on the, the previous builds of medium attack, so yep. the belt-driven multi-pump yep. that's got high pressure at one end and yep. high flow at the other. So this exceeds that, and yep. this would slide in a third of the space with a third of the weight. Proof of concept is that we can go to a fire at night that's with the headlights on, that's with all the scene lights on, that's with your beacons on. So that's the time you're going to be using more electricity than, in the, than at any other time out firefighting. And you need to be able to empty a tank of water, you need to be able to drive a very, very short distance um, to case four to fill up, then drive back onto the fire ground again with all your scene lights on, empty the tank, go back case four and come back onto the fire ground. So we believed if we could complete that evolution with, you know, with the vehicle running and with the alternator topping the battery up, we would consider that successful. What we've got is we could empty the tank, fill the tank, empty the tank, fill the tank, empty the tank, fill the tank dozens and dozens of times without having the vehicle running, with no extra power going in through the alternator and still without running out of battery power. So. Um, proof of concept, is it proof? Yes, yes, many, many, many exceeded, exceeded what we thought we could achieve. Um, the flow rates uh, on this vehicle is comparable to a GAR 125, so to a, uh, a medium attack. What we will do now is we're going to turn this into a video, which is what we're going to do, and we're going to, we're going to send that to Qfleet, we're going to send that to QFIS and to Rural Fire Service Queensland. We're then going to get in a paddock and we're going to let them scratch and sniff and squirt water and play with it. So when everybody is happy that, that, that this is a potentially a viable option, we will talk to Qfleet and talk to the fire service about building a purpose-built light and medium attack with a completely electric back. The plan is to take them around the state, let brigades get a, a, a look and a feel and, and gauge their feedback as well. This project has been sponsored by Qfleet. Uh, who were very, very kind to give the RFBAQ um, this Ford Ranger single cab chassis. Now what we'll be doing with this, once we've finished this proof of concept, is this will go to a rural fire brigade. So Qfleet and the RFBAQ will hand this over to a brigade, uh, and it's a, a Ford Ranger with a three and a half ton GVM upgrade and an enormous tray on the back, so that's going to be very, very popular in brigade land. So we'd also like to thank um, QFES and Rural Fire Service Queensland for allocating uh, $55,000 in this project, including GST. And also an enormous thank to Code, their friends at Code 3, always there to help when we have a project um, with their fantastic light bars.